Going up the hill is always a little tricky in the driveway there. But it's rather steep. <laughs> the fun thing is in the winter, cars will have to sort of make a run at it, even though there's some maybe oncoming traffic. Uh, if they stop at the top, uh, the incline is such that the car will slide back down again. This is with winter tires or not. So, <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, it is uh, 15 hours into the 16th day of August. The packages, well, the first package, anyways, uh, for uh, the trailer have begun to arrive. So we're on the way for that. We're not, we're not probably won't be finished until August, October, and then I'll have a whole new array, array of packages to come in. Uh, for next year, so I'll stop that up and sort of work on that. Anyways, we'll continue our discussion on control. And Lionel has actually been entitled to his, one of his uh, videos as the illusion of control. And that's true. But the thing is, he doesn't seem to understand is that the, 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 he assigns the illusion of control to the prisoners of the planet. In other words, we are the prisoners, the average person is the prisoners, and the, uh, uh, the elites, the shadow government, are the uh, control. Control is with them. However, there is a flaw in this argument in that uh, a lot of times the, the control, the illusion of control applies throughout. And this is why you, I said you talk about the differences between uh, different uh, groups of gnosis. You have the French, you have the uh, you have the French, you have the uh, German, you have the, the Knights of Malta. You have a whole bunch. All throughout your every European state has its own footing, Czechoslovakia. And this is what you're looking at basically in terms of who the enemy of Europe or who, who the enemy of the West is. Well, it's the East versus West once again. And ironically enough, this is this is laid out in the exact map and diagram of the Holy Roman Empire. So if you want to understand what's going on in terms of what's going on in terms of the map of the geopolitics today, you have to go back to the Holy Roman Empire understand what happened there and then move your way forward to see how various different dynasties played into the set of not uh, of Gnosticism, but it's with, of Gnosticism, called Gnostic Europe. And this is the foundation of it. Europe is founded on Gnosticism, not on, not on humanism. Human, humanism came in as a convenience uh, for the Gnostics to control of Europe. And they actually, they, the Gnostics are the shadow government. The ones that, 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 that uh, Lionel is referring to, the shadow government, they're not. They are not humanists. This is what I'm saying. Oh, well, oh, they're not communists. They're not communists. They are, they are Gnostic in every sense of the word. Uh, but what happens is they use communism uh, to sort of hide the Gnosticism, which wouldn't necessarily be as popular. But the thing is that Gnosticism, from their perspective, has to be hidden. It's about like, this hidden knowledge. And that's why it's called no season, or they're called Gnostics, because these are wisdom seekers. So if you look up the term wisdom, in Greek it's sort of Sophia. Go to a search of the term called Sophia. Right? Take the, the, take the philo out of the uh, out of philosophy. Uh, Philiso, Philosophia. Right? Just take the last part, the Sophia which is wisdom, and do sophists, and these are the wisdom seekers. There's a whole, there's an enormous amount there that is not, never ever taught in school. But the thing is, is again, they're all over the place. They, are, they, they break up into kind of different groups, they're never on the same page. They're more often than not in conflict with one another. So, the sense of control, that once again, is illusion, the whole sense of agenda, or or, or them working on, on on the same page or things being scripted is not
not necessarily the reality. There are things that will work together on, but then again, then again, then again, uh, they don't trust each other. Because of the conflicts that go on, there is a lack of trust between one group and another. And this, is, this goes on today, and it was the show I was watching last night shows the distrust between you, you know, between the politicians. You get involved in these things, even if you're a humanist. Uh, that sense of distrust is still there, and it has nothing to do with the humanist values anyway. Humanism understands that, in many cases, because they're basically humanists are hedonists, they believe in their own sense of values, and nobody else's. Like, they're right and you're what else is wrong. This is what makes a liberal a liberal. What makes a liberal a leftist is they come up against the left-hand path of Gnosis. And as this left-hand path, that sort of creates a large chunk of the problems. Because the left-hand path is, is again, it's, a, it's, 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 a, it's not an immoral path, although ultimately it is. It's an amoral path where the morality isn't cared about. So there is no concern with morality on the left-hand path. And this is what we see from the left, is that there is no concern uh, with morality. And this is what we see, this, you know, he says, oh, the demons are, are with us. And yes, the demons are indeed with us, but they've always been with us. This is who, this is who the, 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 the politicians, these Gnostic politicians, these Gnostic leaders, this is who they've been in, in the world with. What do you think Pizza King was? What do you think uh, Spirit Cooking was all about? This was demonic. But there are enough people who convince themselves that magic exists on both the left and the right, that you can use dark magic for good. And so, not all the people up in the Gnostic areas are there specifically for evil. They believe that from the evil that they can, that they can generate good. And how do you get locked into this evil? Well, it goes back again to the Holy Roman Empire and the fundamental shift of Christianity. At that point in time, what the Holy Roman Empire did was fundamentally sh uh, break humanity away from God. In other words, God was no longer made in the image of God. Man was, no made, man was no longer made in the image of God, but rather God was made in the image of man, and they reversed it. From there, they continue on to separate man significantly from God and argue that there has to be an intercessor between God and man, and that's the Pope. The Pope becomes the replacement for Christ. And that's where you get the term Vicar of Christ. This is the, the Vicar of Christ the person who replaces Christ. The unfortunate thing is, and if people sat down and studied this, but they don't, it's not, but it's not a deep study, you'll find that the, the term anti is actually two words in Greek. It's an, it's an, tis, antis. The antis means to take the place of. It is the word that is synonymous with vicar. So the two words, antis and vicar, are the same word. But the, as we said before, the word antis is, in English is the word anti. This is what we get the term anti for. And anything that's anti takes the place of it. And so what's happened is that you see at, at around 1018, this is what created the, the Holy Roman Empire. Uh, you had a person calling himself the Antichrist. You had the emergence of the Antichrist uh, with the beginning of Europe. And so the understanding that, that Europe was indeed Gnostic is an obvious thing once you understand this. So what happened? Well, to be Antich, to be to take the place of Christ, he had to make everything appear to be Christian. This is what it was. The, you have the appearance of Christianity, but underneath, and this is what the boy calls everything, you know, the line calls everything sort of like a, a 
football or whatever it is. Uh, because they are indeed pagan. But they simply have a Christian face. They look like Christian Christians. They act like Christians in terms of the facade, the pretense. They pretend to be pre pretense. Their, their affectation is Christian. But it's false. This is where act you look at the dick definition of that affectation. It is about the false persona. The false persona, the pretense. And their false pretense is uh, Christianity. But they're not actually Christians, they're actually uh, Gnostics. And what happens is, unfortunately, the people who uh, follow this don't necessarily understand that they're pagans. That their leaders are pagans. That they are indeed pagan Gnostics. Because as I said before, there's two types of Gnosticism. There's pagan Gnostic and then there's uh, the Christian Gnostic. The Gnostic and Christian is different than the uh, pagan one. August uh, 2021, and I am heading out on the road for part two of our conversation. These are verbal essays that uh, I do while I'm writing. They're pulled directly from my notes concerning the research that is, that's being done. So, but they're not pulled in terms of any particular order. These are just sort of random bits as we go along. So off we go. We're talking about control, we got into the, the Gnostic. In a lot of terms, because they're loosely defined, cause a great deal of confusion when you're talking about things. And I had left off with the, you know, the pagan Christians. These were part of the, those are the Western Christians, being part of the uh, pagan Gnostics. And when I talk about the, the, the Christian Gnostics, we're talking about another path that's fundamentally different. And they're on the right side. They're, well, they're actually not even in the... In the uh, it appears to be on the right-hand path of the Gnostic, of the, of the, of the uh, left and right-hand path. But they are actually on two, two different paths. They run parallel to each other for a good bit. It's only when you get to the end of the uh, Christian Gnostic path that things differ from the pagan. The pagan provides you on the right hand path with no actual connection to God. Even though there is a heaven, there's a hell, there's uh, reincarnation for those who are in between. But in terms of the actual uh, relationship with God, there fundamentally isn't one. And this is where the whole thing comes in, is that uh, on the Christian path, well, the rest of the pagan path, the rest of the Gnostic path, becomes one with the universe. The Christian path brings you to a oneness with God become one with God. You become united to God. And this is what Christians do is when they bless themselves and the older Christians, the uh, earlier Christians bless themselves from right to left. Because they had put in baptism in the initiation which called these well we'll just call it an initiation right now there's actually more to it than that. It's not even a rite or a ritual. Uh 
You are said to put on Christ. You wear Christ. And that that that's the terminology. That, that's sort of the words used to sort of describe uh, what a Christian is in terms of that we are now united to Christ. And people wonder well, why, in, in terms of a kabaddi and stuff like that, why do they, why did, why can't they be part of uh, another church? Well, the if you're being birthed into the church by a godparent, then the godparent must be within the church. In other words, in order for them to give you the garment of Christ that you're going to wear, they themselves have to be wearing the garment of Christ. If they're from with another church that has separated itself from Christ, in other words, there's a division between uh, God and the people. Uh, then they cannot give you the garment. <laughs> because they, said they, they don't have it, they don't have the ability to wear it. And they're outside of the house. So they, 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 people say, oh yeah, they, 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 this whole thing of ecumenism. This is a good thing because everyone's uniting to, to, together. But what are you uniting under? You're uniting under uh, Christ, the anti-Christ? Or you're not, are you uniting under Antichrist. And remember, the Antichrist, when he comes, or in many cases, he's already here, he's not going to act as a demon. He's going to act outwardly as Christ would. He's going to work to be the replacement for Christ. So many people will not see that they're within the grasp of the Antichrist. They think that we're doing something good. But the reality is they're actually within the grasp of the Antichrist. This this happens to a lot of people. It's not going to happen to a few people. It's going to happen to a lot. must not be in service, so he's riding so he can have coffee with the other guy. And so what happens is most Christians will not be aware that they are no longer connected with Christ. But this is the nature of the sheep, or the calf, or whatever, however you want to describe the flock that's going to be slaughtered. This is the true intention of the shepherd, of the false shepherd, of the Antichrist, to lead these people to, to, to lead them to slaughter. Oh, that, those moves in the road aren't so good. Is, is that this is what we're seeing. We're not seeing a lot of confusion. Even amongst the elite, there's a certain, a, a certain amount of confusion up there as well. Because uh, in the light of deceit, they can never determine who is going to be true and who is not going to be true. So, you know, they have a scientist giving them the report. But if all these scientists are on the take, sort of, you know, involved in everything that's going on, all the shenanigans that go on, how do you trust the report that the scientist is going to give you? Well, the thing is you can't. And so this is where they run into a lot of problems because if the information they're given, and more often than not this is the case, the information that they're given is incorrect, or false even, uh, they're not going to be able to make the distinction between, uh, you know, what is real and what's not real. What is true in the report and what is false in the report. And so this will lead to the confusions that you see in the current situation, where you have different groups within the Gnostic realm on the left-hand path battling it out for control. And this actually, this is where I go back to the, the Holy Roman Empire. Follow that line all the way through into the evolution of Europe. 
and you begin to see the problem that the fighting was always there, that, that the battles were always kingdom against kingdom. So this is what we're seeing now. We're seeing these skir skir uh, skirmishes, squabbles, or fights. A number of different things that sort of indi indicate that they're in, everything at the top is not all honky dory. That, 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 that they're not on all the same page. They're all not reading from the same script. But rather, that they had a common understanding, a common interest, really. And beyond the common interest, it's just simply going to be one one battle after another. And this is actually what we're seeing. We see this. We see the battle between Pelosi and Biden. Now Schumer has gotten involved in the battles. AOC has gotten involved, and a number of different uh, so-called democratic uh, entities and groups all the time involved in this. They're all, they're all battling each other. I mean, there was certainly no uh, love affair between Obama and, and Clinton. This is something that can be seen. That, 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 you know, these are things that you know, if you read wide enough, you can sort of see the conflicts that go on. The problem is that the media has always been part of the government. It's always been part of the establishment, and they've always been the PR people. This is uh, Edward Bernays. Uh, so you know, you can see this all going all the way back to 1915. So not a new thing. Not uh, a, a, a Operation Mockingbird, or you know, the, the CIA taking control of the media, it's always been like this. The CIA, CIA didn't need to take over uh, the media the, the, because they began, they were part of the media and they've always been part of the media. Hello.